All right. It is Monday, guys. Monday the... 27th. 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 Aww. Wow. What's the I matter? my little foamy thing. What'd you lose? My little foamy thing. Uh-oh. I got mine. Yeah, it's around somewhere. Um, sorry, we lost our uh, we lost our foamy thing. The little <laughs> deal there. Well, I'm sure that just probably scratched in your ear. Sorry about that. I wasn't thinking. Anyway, um, so it is Monday, the 27th. Uh, fantastic. We had a great weekend. We're really excited about this week coming up. Uh, especially the sale on Friday. We'll be talking about that more as the week goes along. And uh, I, I'm not going to talk about it too much tonight, but basically it's the Toms that are on sale, 50% off. Anyway, you guys probably already know, but I'm going to be harping on it. You'll see a little uh, Matt Bay made us a little commercial. Matt's here. And uh, we will be showing that. I know he showed it on his... Huh? I did send it in an email to um, to all of our all of our customers, but you guys might not have seen that. But I'll be posting it on Facebook probably a couple times over the next few days. Hi, Andy. Anyway, yeah, we're uh, lots of great things going on, and um, I have to first of all I have to apologize. When we do these lives, it stores it in my phone. And then later on, I post it on YouTube, as you guys know. And Sundays, I do a lot of those uploads. And I always make them unlisted, so then I can schedule them one day uh, apart so that there's videos every day. Yesterday, obviously, if you guys watch us on uh, YouTube, uh, we posted two that were supposed to be unlisted last night. They posted consecutively, so... Uh, YouTube, we posted three YouTube videos yesterday, the one in the morning and two in the evening. So anyway, <clears throat> we might be a little short on videos later on in the week. But anyway, I think I've got one scheduled Did for we tomorrow. Not get, didn't, weren't able to save Saturday mornings. And Saturday mornings, we lost it um, because my phone was full. It was a long process but we lost Saturday morning so we won't be able to repost that so if you want to watch that go back to the Facebook page it'll be there um, and we've got a big announcement in in regards to international business and I'm going to talk about that at the end a little bit but anyway so you got three videos on YouTube yesterday and uh, so there might be, I don't know, maybe Wednesday, Thursday, I might not be posting on YouTube. I'm Anyone not sure. Anyone who complains will be booted off. That's from Frank. <laughs> Thank you, Frank. Okay, I just, uh, tonight is actually going to be pretty short. I want to answer a question that I got. Uh, just one question tonight because I want to talk a little bit more about the international stuff at the end and I'm sure there's going to be questions. Um, Jim asks, have you ever used or considered using a Dremel tool to carve uh, in fine or tight spots on a project? They have a plunge router base that appears to work well um, for fine carving. So, it's uh, apropos that Jim asked this question because on my shop sign, you guys know that I did use the Dremel on there, but obviously I didn't use it with a, with a, a base, um, a kind of a plunge base, I said. Uh, I didn't have, what's the matter? Oh, you Matt got a strange says, look. me and Josh Tolson are looking to find, at putting together a Roten's Midwest Minions group. <laughs> that would be awesome. That would be great. Anyway, I, I'm sorry. Yeah. Make it happen, Matt. Uh, I'll see if I can make it. That would be Matt, fun. Matt Marlin says, I'm down. Yeah, that would be fun. Um, so, uh, have I used a Dremel? I just started getting into a Dremel, and actually, uh, Vicky's got a Dremel like on steroids. <laughs> She's got now, what do you have? It's a Fordham. She has a Fordham with the help of Sue Alexander, mm -hmm. kind of turned her on to doing some power carving with her Fordham. And that thing is, uh, that puts a Dremel to... Uh, I love Tessa. Yeah, that, that, that thing is really a cool machine. Um, but here's the thing. 
I was I was kind of looking at this. So so what Jim is asking is, you know, to use this instead of this for small fine detail. Even if this did have a base on it, I I honestly I wouldn't consider doing router work with the Dremel, even if it did have a base with handles. This is 1.8 amp. This is 6.5 amp. So to give you an example, if let's say I was a carpenter and I work with these all day long or bigger than these, well, can I drive it with that? Maybe it's possible. But wouldn't I be better off with something like this or even better, something like that? Isn't that the right tool for, the, for this job? That's the way I look at it as far as detail carving with a router. That's just not what this is meant for. This is a great tool. It, and you guys saw I used it a lot when uh, I had the little uh, cuts all grinder rasps in there. It's a great tool for what it does. But to try and make this into doing the same kind of work that a router will do. In, now, let me, let me preface that by saying for what I do, for carving signs. Maybe, you know, something else. But to try and make this do what this does is to try and make this do what this does. It just doesn't, it's just going to take a lot longer. It doesn't have the power. It's just not designed to carve signs. Not to say that you can't do it with this, but there have been many, many times over the years where guys were making signs with a Dremel and they never, they were intimidated by this because they just didn't understand it. They didn't know how to use it. They were intimidated by it. But once they use this thing, it's night and day. And those of you that have tried it, you know what I'm talking about. You just can't do the depth. You can't take it. It takes maybe 10 times longer. I don't know. But um, this is great for what it does, but not to compare to what it does in comparison to what this does. So that's I, I tried to kind of paint a word picture kind of give you guys an analogy that a Dremel is a great tool, but it's just not design. It's not designed to carve signs. It's Lewis just Brian says I like that illustration. Well, I, I'm a simple guy. <laughs> I, it's gotta be simple or I can't figure it out. But anyway, this, you know, the routers, you know, what is it? Five times, four and a half, five times more powerful than 1.8 amp to 6.5 amp. Um, it's just not even comparable. And and to be honest, to put a little base plate or a base, a plunge base on this and try and do, I can't even imagine it. It would be a nightmare. <laughs> I just, I wouldn't even attempt it. So, but if those of you that don't know, brand new people, that's a very valid question. It just doesn't, it doesn't compute Christina for me. Christina Klein says great visual. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy to help. Uh, especially for the new people. So, um, okay, let's get into sign carvers of the day because I got some really good ones here. And then at the end, a big announcement about international business. All right, uh, I think it's Donnell. Donnell C. This is a first carving by uh, Donnell. And um, it's a jewelry box. Which I thought was really it's like cool. A resin in it? Yeah, that's a resin, a resin, little resin strip on top there. Very nice. Yeah, very nicely done. I really like it, and it sent other pictures too of the inside with it felted and all that. It looked really good. Uh, Tor Liebeck from Norway, very first sign. Lot of painting, Ugh, mm -hmm. man. Uh, good job, Tor. I think it's Tor or Tori. Great job, Tor. Anyway, that's a lot of flat background there too. That's where you got to be really careful that you don't nick those uh, those letters. It's pretty easy to do with a big flat background bit. Great job, Tor. Jason Harrison, who is uh, Jason's in the UK. Yeah, I think he changed the name on his. Uh, 
Did he finally too, get rid Julie of Julie? And Jason. No, Julie oh, it's and Julie Jason. and Jason. So now, I can, now that I remember the name. Yeah, Jason. he did that just for you, <laughs> I'm sure. Anyway, this is very, very cool. Jason, great job, buddy. That is, Clothing is optional. <laughs> I think that this is a great niche for, uh, you know, people that have backyard tiki uh, barbecues and all that stuff. I think it's a great niche. Terrific job, Jason. Love it. Richie. Hi, Justin. Richie Barclay. You've talked he's, to uh, Richie, right? He's, yeah, he's normally here. You've talked to him on the phone, I think. I think so. Um, oh, Richie. Uh, oh, Richie. No, that's a... No, that's a different Richie, isn't different it? Richie. Richie Barclay's in New Zealand, actually. Yeah. Second sign uh, for a friend's garage bar. Again, um, a great niche for garage bars and tiki <laughs> bars. Jason said, yes, I did. Changed it just See, I told you. I knew it. Great um, job, Richie. I love it. Well, I thank love you, Jason. I really like that font. That font is cool. It has a really good look to it. That would be very forgiving, too. Much like our fatty font, that would be very forgiving. I don't know what font that is, so don't ask me, guys. I just don't know. Ask Richie. Okay. Great job, Richie. Dave Rossiter. Only He's been another one that's in uh, international, isn't he? Uh, Dave? Yeah. I'm not sure. I think he is. I think I just sent him a really? package. Really? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it could be. Dave is, um, he's only been carving since June. Wow. Like what? A month and a half, something like that. Terrific job, man. Um, I love it. I love it. Those are cute little So we've got, I didn't realize we had so much it's international so stuff. One, two, three, four, uh, maybe three or four out of five is international here. So... Um, that's on that a, note. Yeah, on that note. So here's what we found out, guys. And, uh, oh, he is here. Who it's is? It's called Richard. Uh, it's called the Forte font. Thanks, Eric. Oh, Forte font. Richie, where are you at? Oh, he's in New Zealand, I think. Yeah, according to this, he's in New Zealand. You know what, Matt? I didn't. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay, so... Um, I think, I don't, did we, did we talk about this on Friday we or Saturday? We talked about it on Saturday. On Saturday a little bit. But here's the deal, guys. Bob Wainsley over in the UK. Dave Rossiter, he's in Canada. Dave's yeah, in Canada. So. Hey, Dave. And, da and Richie's in New Zealand. Yeah, so we have like four out of five that's international. And that just is the way they came. That's cool. So you international guys, here's the deal. We have struggled with our international business for years. Because of the cost of shipping. Because of the shipping costs. And it's just, it's either reasonable through USPS or it's really expensive through DHL. USPS, we simply will never use again for international. Never so we have right time. now two packages that were delivered the first part of June. Or shipped, excuse yeah. me, first part of June. And still they still have haven't not been delivered. So... Here's what we found out. We found this out by accident. Uh, Bob Wamesley, and thank you, Bob, for this. He wrote me an email. He said, Eric, he says, I was searching through eBay the other day, and I see a listing for you for one of your base plates. And I go, uh, Bob, would you send me a link to that? Because that's not us. We don't list on eBay in UK. Well, he sent me the link, and it turns out we do list. So here's what happened eBay started this program, this global shipping, uh, global, global, shipping program. global shipping program. We had clicked the little box that we were interested in it, and they automatically took our listings, which we have 27 here in eBay, U.S. eBay, and they automatically took all of those listings and they put them on all of the eBay, almost all of the eBay uh, selling sites worldwide, which there's 23 of them. There's only four that they don't There's only on. four countries out of About 100. like 110 countries. There's like uh, 30 per page. So there's like 110 countries. The only countries we're not in are China, Taiwan, Thailand, and Vietnam. So if you are international and you go to your eBay, wherever that is, eBay.com, AU for Australia or CA for Canada, whatever. 
chances it are that you're going to find our products. Look for our our store name is Old Dave 100. O L D A V 100 just like the YouTube channel. Dad started that years and years ago. So that means that and it's very reasonable. We we uh, sold two things. We shipped two. well, well We'll, we'll, we'll be shipping today, two we'll orders ship tomorrow. And so here's the thing. We've got 27 items listed right now, 26 or 27, on like 21 out of 23 eBay selling sites worldwide. What we have to do is we have to ship it to Kentucky. That's the distribution center for eBay. They distribute it to wherever it goes. So when you guys see that listing... You will see what it will cost you for fees, for it's shipping, fine. and all of that. We will receive what we receive for the product, and then whatever your shipping and fees, custom fees, are, it will show you that right on the listing. It should show you that right on the listing. That means that after all this time, now we are going to have all of our stuff, virtually all of our stuff, available to anybody pretty much worldwide. Not China, not Taiwan, not Thailand, not Vietnam. But anybody else, according to what we show right now, anybody else we can ship to right now, today. We can ship worldwide using the eBay system. Now, we don't have everything listed on there yet. We're hoping to have all of the router bits, all of the layout letters, all of the all of our stuff, all of our main stuff, router bit depth gauge, you know the different things we we expect to have all of that stuff listed on ebay worldwide within the next two weeks until that time if you guys want to buy router bits you want to buy anything we got let send vicky an email she will set up a special ebay listing private. just for you a private ebay listing just for you based on what you want to order and then she will send you a link to it you can go right to that link, purchase it. It will tell you, and you don't have. There's no commitment on it until you see what the price is, what your fees and shipping and all that. eBay adds all that on automatically, so um, it's absolutely available. And from what I understand, it's very reasonable from a shipping and a and yeah. a fees um, standpoint. Richard, somebody, Richard Barclay, David Rossiter. Dave Rossiter, I think we just did one for him, and it went out. And I think it actually, it's delivered a lot faster. I yeah. think it might be a week or two weeks or something like yeah. that. Not as fast as uh, DHL, but DHL two, three, four times the price. Um, but I think if it, if it is like what I saw on one of the... Um, or one of the UK things, it actually gives you an estimated, estimated delivery date estimated right on it. Date, yeah. So it'll tell you. And the one I, the one I saw was like, I don't know, four or five days. Well, I got, like that. we shipped one out the other day. It got to Kentucky. Once it gets to Kentucky, I get a shipping confirmation that with tracking information where I can track it once it leaves Kentucky. Really? And internationally? It, internationally. Wow, that's and it cool. said that it should be delivered by Friday. So, yeah. And that's like a week and a half. Yeah. So, um, anyway, guys, you know, uh, I know there have been many times over the last five to ten years where people say, I wish I could get your router bits, these amount of bits in uh, the UK, uh, because they're just not available. Well, they are now. We, all of our router bits are available now to anybody, just Unless about anybody. Unless some unforeseen thing happens at the distribution center where they say nope we can't send it but we that you know we just don't know yeah there's there's we have no reason to believe right now that 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 is going to be any issue as far as we can tell right now um all of our stuff is available to just about anybody worldwide very reasonably and in a reasonable um timely shipping manner uh and not super expensive like dhl so um we're really excited about that because people have been really uh, disappointed that they can't get our stuff oh internationally. Goodness. I'm sorry. I thought, I'm like, we haven't gotten any message, any <laughs> comments, but then it just didn't scroll up. Let's see. 
Matt says, I think I'm going to have to make a new international eBay commercial for you. <laughs> You're too Tessa kind, says, Okay, Matt. good question, Tessa. So will they be able to get in on the trivia question? Need to know my com my competition, what my competition is. <laughs> Um, that I don't know I don't because know. they still have to pay the export fees, we, you know. So that still gets a little tricky because in order for us to list products on eBay, everything has to be weighed and measured, what size box and all that. And with the giveaways, they're always different sizes, different weights, and all that. So so Richard Bartley said last package I got from you was through USPS. Shipping cost thirty dollars more than eBay. Had to use USPS because the shipping issues from COVID. Yeah. 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 So, um, you know, th this COVID thing may throw a hitch in that. We don't know. But as of right now, we don't have any indication that it, it other than that, that it, uh, that it'll be a problem. So, um, anyway, we're, we're happy to ship wherever you guys want to order from. We're happy to ship to you. So, uh, again, you can find our store, Old Dave 100. If the product is there that you want, great. Uh, hopefully, it will be there in the next couple weeks. Until then, you can email Vicky with Dave Signs at gmail.com and uh, she will set up a special listing for you. So, any of our products, so you can go to makeawoodsign.com. Anything that's on there, we should be able to ship it worldwide. So Jay Burby says, what kind of paint do you do these carvers use that do multicolor signs? Do you use a small brush? Okay, I, I like the one shot. I think it works really good, but I've also used um, I've also used acrylic paints, little water-based acrylic paints with a brush. I don't like them that much. They they will work. I don't like them that much, but I like the one shot, which goes on really smooth and like one coat. Okay, the, Lewis, that's the that's what we were just talking about uh, for the eBay uh, giveaways. That's that's not been confirmed yet. We have to do more research because of the listing uh, weight, and you still have to pay export fees on it. So uh, I don't know. We don't know yet. As of right now, no. Yeah, but we will we will look into that. Yeah, we will look into that. Because that, that might be something we can work that out, but I'm not sure. Yeah, we'll have to we, look. We have to look into it. So, okay, anything else? Mm, I don't think so. Richard Barclay said, just thankful to get your stuff. I can get your stuff. Well, we're thankful for all of you that, that watch us and uh, our, uh, all the support that we get. Patient enough to put up with us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So it's taken us a while to get this stuff figured out. And I don't know how long we've been, our stuff has been listed internationally. If if Bob Wamesley hadn't run across it accidentally, it might have been another six months before we found out. I don't know how long it's been there. Might well, been I know there. it's been there well, at least three years. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. Anyway, not going to look back. Time to look forward. So... Anyway, I'm really excited about the international possibilities. So, guys, let us know. If you have any questions, obviously email vickywithdavesigns at gmail.com. And if you have questions for me, eric at makeawoodsign.com. And uh, I've got something else brewing uh, that you guys, I'll be making an announcement on in the next couple of weeks. Um, I'm working on it now. You do? So, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Did I know about it? Yeah, you know about okay. it, but I didn't say I was going to say anything about okay. it. So. Tessa says, what's the trick on getting your corners square on your letters? Getting the corners square, the inside corners or outside corners? The outside corners, if you want a square corner, go 90 degrees. There's, there's your outside corner. Uh, I guess the, uh, you know, if uh, an inside sharp corner is... Um, very hard to do with a round router bit, but um, oh, Bert's here. Bert, did you get my email? Bert Grant. Yeah. Uh, sharp corners. Take your time, Tessa. Inside. Okay, inside. Take your time. Go shallow. Stay away from the line and work your way in. Even if you got to do it three or four passes, take your time. Don't try and 
rush it and uh, take too much wood at a time. Make it, make it several passes if you need to. Take your time. Okay, that's it. Uh, I covered everything, I think. I think so. I think I did it all. Yep, we're good. So, guys, have a great night. Thanks so much for watching. If you have questions, you know how to get a hold of us. Um, keep sending the sign cards of the day. And uh, obviously, you guys, I haven't talked about the sign carver directory. If you guys want to be in the sign carving directory, uh, it's really cool. Go on the website, check it out. It doesn't cost anything. Matt Bay, again, Mr. Developer Matt Bay put it together for us. We'd be happy to add you to the sign carving directory. All you have to do is send me a couple pictures of stuff that you've done so I can see what it is. And uh, then we will uh, consider putting you in the directory. So that's it, guys. We are out. We will be here tomorrow night, 6 p.m., same time. And uh, hope you guys have a great night. And we will see you tomorrow. tomorrow. Good night, guys. Bye, guys. Love you.